Hello everyone and welcome to Second Sunday. Join us for art making fun inspired by artists who use food to create fantastic portraits. Food has long played a role in art. During the Renaissance, Giuseppe Archimboldo painted whimsical puzzle-like portraits with facial features composed of fruits, vegetables, and flowers. Today, artist Martin Gutierrez creates socially conscious photographic self-portraits using similar materials. Would you like to make art at home, but you think you don't have any art supplies? If so, you're in luck, because today we will show you how to use food or food scraps to make your own personal artwork. First, let's meet the artist. Giuseppe Arcimboldo was an Italian Renaissance painter known for creating imaginative portrait heads made entirely of objects such as fruits, vegetables, flowers, fish, and books. A portrait is an artwork that focuses on a person. It can include just their face or their whole body. Martin Gutierrez is a contemporary American artist born in Berkeley, California in 1989. Gutierrez is known for creating artworks that question how identity is formed, expressed, and perceived. She calls herself portraits, or food faces, masks. We know this by looking at the title of her artwork, which is part of the information on the label next to the art. The artist refers to this artwork as a mask and also the process of masking. That is to say, changing the way you look or your identity so that people can see or perceive you differently. Even though these images are self-portraits, the artist's identity is covered by a mask of fruit and vegetables. It makes us think about how we identify people. By creating new faces, often with exaggerated features, Gutierrez asks us to think about what beauty is. Green Grapes Mask 2018 shows Gutierrez's face painted white with jasmine rice paste with halved kiwi fruits placed on her eyelids, a dragon fruit in her mouth, cabbage covering her eyebrows, and a necklace of green grapes. Do you wonder why the artist used fruit for this series of mass portraits? Martin Gutierrez wanted to connect with nature to soothe her body and mind, as humans have done for thousands of years. Martin Gutierrez was excited to build an identity based on new and unusual forms. Looking for shapes and textures and colors in fruit, flowers and vegetables that could create what we recognize as a face, we can also look for shape, color, and textures to make our own artwork. Our identity is the way we see and express ourselves. The artist has recreated facial features with attention to shape. The round head shape is created by carving a watermelon. Chives or green onions define the nose shape. Tomatoes are round eyeballs and little white flowers look like bubbles coming from the mouth. What is important to you? What foods will you choose to make your portrait? Step one, find a plate to use as a base or head shape for your portrait. It may be a paper plate or other material like ceramic, bamboo, plastic, wood, or glass. Step two, Gather some fruits and vegetables. These may include whole fruits and vegetables, or even scraps that you have asked your adults to save from a meal, or bits and pieces that you will eat later. This activity will make good use of vegetables and fruit scraps that would otherwise be thrown away. Some such examples are pineapple tops and skin, coconut shells, celery and carrot tops, Peels from bananas, oranges, apples, cucumbers, zucchini, carrots, cauliflower, broccoli, and even kale. Potatoes, peppers, seeds from melons, peach pits, and any stems and trimmings will do. Step three, 
Arrange the fruits and vegetables on the plate to create a face. Step four, take a photo of the face or portrait that you made and share it with us. Step five, save the edible pieces and eat them for your next snack or meal. I use lettuce and tiny strawberries that I grew in my garden, as well as a banana from the grocery store and an apricot that I sliced in half for the ears. Then I use the apricot pit to make the nose. This is a happy face. It shows how I feel inside when I make art. It also shows that being close to nature by tending my garden is an important part of my identity. And these are the kind of colorful foods that I like to eat. I also gratefully acknowledge all the workers who grow and pit most of the food we eat. Here are two faces I made showing different expressions. I think they look like two people from the same family. You may choose to make faces that look like a real person, a portrait or self-portrait, or perhaps you are inspired to make a mask-like face. Our next artist is known for making surprising organic portraits, and we will learn how complex forms can be created using simple objects. Now let's look at the art of Archimboldo. He made this still life painting of a bowl with vegetables. This type of artwork is called a still life. A still life features natural objects such as fruits, flowers, and vegetables that are arranged with human made objects of contrasting texture, like glassware, ceramics, and metal. Surprise, this is the painting we just looked at, but it has been reversed or turned upside down. Archimboldo's composite portraits demonstrate his ability to not only show nature and human beings at the same time, but also to illustrate how closely related they are. Let's compare them. On the left, I see a painting of a brown ceramic bowl filled with an assortment of vegetables. It's a still life with vegetables, carrots, peppers, lettuce, zucchini, squash, garlic, or onion, and turnips. When the painting is turned upside down, it becomes a portrait of a man with a face made out of vegetables. Did you notice that the title of this painting is The Vegetable Gardener? From a distance, this composite head seems to be a standard human portrait. Yet a closer view reveals individual flowers and leaves carefully selected to characterize the subject forming various anatomical shapes of a human face. Archimboldo also made images that weren't quite portraits. The paintings that he created of the four seasons were not representations of specific people, but personifications of the seasons. Summer is a luxuriant display of fruit, vegetables, nuts, and grains. We can see it as a guide to what foods would have then been locally available during this time. The artist also included rare varieties imported from the Western Hemisphere, such as corn, which was not grown in Europe until 1525. If you look closely, you will find some visual puns. For example, the ear is represented by an ear of corn. Because all flowers do not bloom at the same time of year, Archimboldo must have prepared studies of the individual species when each one blossomed and then put them together in a painting. In this imaginative portrait, Vertumnus, the ancient god of the seasons and vegetation, is identified by multiple fruits, vegetables, and flowers that come together to create a portrait. Archimboldo's choice of fruits, vegetables, and flowers also referenced power and wealth. During the Renaissance, collections of plants and animals and goods from far away were status symbols for rich Europeans. A friend of the artist, a poet named Comanini, wrote poems that explained the portrait's meaning to help people understand the beauty of nature that Archimboldo's portraits express. 
One of the best parts about making art is sharing it with others and seeing how your art inspires their ideas. Now let's see what our museum educators have made. Hi everyone and welcome to Second Sunday. I was lucky this month because for my food face, both my mom and my dad wanted to help out. It's a big rule in my family to not play with food, so this project felt a little weird. So we decided to just cook with whatever we ended up using. I waited for a day when my mom would be cooking with a lot of veggies and then my dad and I got to making. We first started by cutting up our materials. For you, I recommend having your parent or guardian do this part. Knives are sharp and dangerous. Also, make sure you wash your hands before handling any food so that you don't spread germs. The ingredients we had were bell peppers, jalapenos, carrots, onions, garlic, bok choy, basil, cashews, and rice noodles. We decided to use everything except the noodles because they were a little too rigid in their shape. It was so interesting getting to work with fresh vegetables. When I cook, I'm usually rushing because I'm hungry. Because of that, I usually don't think that much about how my food looks or the shapes that they come in. I'm more focused on what they taste like and how long they take to cook. So to slow down and use them as an art material made me see ingredients in a new way. I realized that food isn't just beautiful because it tastes good. It's really just beautiful. It was also so fun working with my dad. We decided to try and make each other out of food. For me, that meant paying attention to his mustache and eyebrows. And for him, that meant finding a way to show that I had glasses and hair. I liked that we both decided to use bell peppers for our noses too, because it kind of made it seem like the two food faces were related, just like my dad and me. We were having so much fun that we even decided to make a third face together. We tried to make that one seem sad. The project also made me feel closer to my mom. Food has always been a big deal in my family. No matter how hard things were, my mom always made sure that we had a full fridge and nutritious meals. Her philosophy has always been that we need food to survive, so we might as well enjoy it. But to me, food is one of the many ways that she shows her love for us. Cooking is intensive and time-consuming. It's definitely not my favorite thing to do. But my mom cooks these amazing dinners almost every day. She even makes two different dishes, one with meat and one without because my little sister is vegan. Food is also one of the few ways that I get to learn about my mom. She immigrated here from Guyana, South America when she was just 11 years old. She tried hard to assimilate because she was still figuring herself out and she didn't want to get picked on. That meant she forced herself to use an American accent, to not use the British spellings of words, and to use different idioms. And this meant my sisters and I grew up without knowing much of Guyana's history and culture. But she was always open when it came to food. We always ate all of her favorites. West Indian curry, chow mein, metaji, pine tarts, butter flaps, bakes and salt fish. And because she shared them with us, these foods became our favorites too and stood as a connection to my mom's home country. It was so nice getting to work with both my dad and my mom for this second Sunday. And dinner was absolutely delicious. I hope you all have a great time making. Hello, everyone. We're going to make fabulous food faces today. And I'm going to do a self-portrait on pizza. And here I'm rolling out the pizza dough. You can find a recipe for pizza dough online if you want. But I'm going to use tomato sauce for my pizza sauce and I'm tracing out and marking out the shape of my face from the sketch I have and then I'm gonna bring in the vegetables here comes the bell pepper and tomatoes green onions a carrot and some basil there it is and I'm gonna slice off the outside of the carrot it's a little dirty but then I'm gonna slice more slices and use that for my face and particularly my hair and here I'm putting cheese on so you can see my face a little better the red sauce probably isn't the best contrast for orange carrot hair but here I'm using green for my hair so that would be the basil for my eyebrows and the green onion for my beard and 
some more highlights on my hair. Oh, and I got salami for my cheeks. Because I got meaty cheeks. <laughs> and a bell pepper for my nose. Oh, and what's that? Tomatoes for eyes and a tomato for the mouth. And I'm trying to figure out what vegetables work well for my face and what shapes they should be. I see some triangles, some circles, not so much squares. Oh, and add more basil in the hair, it looks like. Yep, yep, yep. We're making progress. And if it looks a little squished, what's nice about the pizza dough is you could stretch it out. There it is. And I'm probably turning on the oven, waiting for it to warm up. And now I'm sliding it on the paddle and I'm putting it in the oven. What's it going to look like? Who knows? Hopefully it turns out all right. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Oh, no, the basil shrank. But that's okay. It still is tasty. Good luck making your own. Thank you so much for participating, and we hope you all have a fun day. Until next time, we'll see you on the original Second Sunday.